we just without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Yesterday, President Obama nominated Federal Appeals Court Judge Merrick Garland to fill the vacancy left by the death of Associate Justice Scalia. The President has done his job. Now it's time for the Senate to do ours, to use the advice and consent on this nominee, to not treat that as an option, but as an obligation. It's my sincere hope that in the coming days and weeks, all of my Senate colleagues will join me in meeting the nominee, evaluating him based on his merits and his on his records, and that Republican objections about this individual be laid aside so that at least they can look at his qualifications, his judicial temperament, and his record. Chief Garland has served the United States Court of Appeals since 1997. And let me stress, he has served on this important court for almost 20 years. He was previously at a law firm as a partner. He served as U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia and as Deputy Assistant Attorney in General in the Criminal Division of the U.S. Department of Justice. And finally, he served as a U.S. Circuit Judge earlier in his career. He is highly qualified as a nominee. America deserves to have a fully functioning court, and they deserve to have senators who will do their job in reviewing this nominee. The Supreme Court cases which impact our fundamental rights and our operations of government, including the extent of property rights, privacy rights, the balance between civil liberties and national security, how to ensure equal protection under the law, and how to guarantee adequate and due process are all things that deserve to have a full Supreme Court. We need a fully functioning court to keep the balance that we have in our system, the checks and balances throughout our government, and we cannot delay the consideration of this Supreme Court nominee. President Obama had an obligation to fill this vacancy on the court. He did so by making this nomination, and his duty doesn't end just because this is an election year. The Senate has a constitutional obligation now to, to provide the advice and consent to the President on this nominee. That is a job that we should all take very seriously, and the American people deserve no less. In fact, a Supreme Court Justice who grew up in the state of Washington William O. Douglas was nominated and confirmed within 16 days. That's right, 16 days. President Franklin Roosevelt, D. Roosevelt nominated Justice Douglas on March 20th, 1939, to serve the U.S. Supreme Court in a seat vacated by Justice Brandeis, and Justice Douglas was confirmed by the United States Senate on April 4th, 1939. He went on to serve on the Supreme Court for 36 years. So, Madam President, it can be done, and while I'm not saying it has to be done in the short amount of time that that took, 16 days, I do believe that we can get this nominee done in efficient time. If you look at the record of most of Supreme Court nominees, it's been on average of 70 days. So we have plenty of time to make this consideration and make this decision. And yet, Senate Republicans have manufactured their own artificial barrier to this debate of the Supreme Court nominee, basically saying that they don't believe that we have to take up consideration of this issue. I'm asking them, please take Justice Garland's, Judge, please take Judge Garland's phone calls. Please make your schedule available to meet with him. And when we return, please schedule hearings to consider his nomination. And then do what the American people want us to do, that is do our job and actually vote on consideration of Judge Garland. This is in the interest of the American people. I know that Senate Republicans want to say that they want to wait, but we cannot wait a full year to get another nominee on the court. The Senate has confirmed Supreme Court justices in the final year of a presidency more than a dozen times. And during the last year of the 
President Reagan's final term, Justice Kennedy was unanimously confirmed by a Democratic-controlled Senate. So the Republican Party is saying, the Republican on the other side of the aisle and the many out there in the party is saying they want to just allow a minority to drive the interest of the party and delay, 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 delay. Well, in my opinion, you are delaying justice. In fact, you are taking some of the gridlock that has existed in this building and just moving it across the street to the Supreme Court. We cannot have delays and gridlock in our judicial system. We need to do our job and move through this process. So today, I'm urging my colleagues to hold the hearings, ask the tough questions, and finally hold a vote. Let's show the American people that we can do our job and that we can vote for or against this nominee. But you have to first meet with him, take his phone calls, and schedule a hearing. The Seattle Times recently wrote, quote, the hyperpartisan milieu of Congress in election year must not thwart the, the framers' intent, end quote. And the Olympia newspaper in our state wrote, quote, the Republican Party's intransience in Congress is legendary, but the new refusal to consider any appointment of a new justice in the U.S. Supreme Court by President Obama is an outright abuse of power, end quote. So if the other side continues to refuse a nominee until a new president is sworn in, it would mark the longest period in the history of the Senate since the Civil War to fill a vacancy. All the positions on the Supreme Court are essential. My constituents and people all across America expect the Senate to do its job, regardless of whether it's an election year or not. So I hope that as our forefathers and framers of our Constitution put together a government that works, that those here in the United States Senate will take the phone calls of Justice Garland, take the meetings, schedule a hearing, and make sure that we vote on this nominee this year. I thank the President. I yield the floor.